our hand basically in front of us. Just like if we had a sword, we wouldn't be cutting the way out here. We would be closer to our bodies. So when we do tenshinage, this happens a lot. And we end up throwing like this. And then we have to use muscle that not only to affect our partner's body, but it ends up putting up stress on our own body. So let's slow this down. The hands come up and down basically in front of yourself. So really check out if you're doing that or not. It comes from this side, but it doesn't come past this line on your body. It's something I'm going to have myself, so I'm trying to work it out. You do this a lot. You get in this position. So you're doing that. And it's the same thing. We're behind ourselves. We want to keep. He comes to me, grabs both of my arms, 
that image on the TV that I got it, we read it, that makes perfect sense. But even within the same family of techniques, we have to think about what makes each technique appropriate for each situation. If can you stretch on the please? And stay there. If you stretch on the Gucci and I go to here, and I only enter here, it's not natural for me to try to do it in the I can't even reach his torso. I have to move to something else in order to make it an appropriate situation for Idiminage. This, however, is a very nice situation for... Yes! It's an appropriate situation for Korigaish. Likewise, if I enter this far, does it make sense if you do an Ikkyo Ura? No, it doesn't. I'm not in an appropriate position for Ikkyo Ura. So where we are in relation to our partner matters. It's not just to enter behind any old place and do whatever under technique. It changes from technique to technique. So if I enter deeply, it creates an Ikkyo situation. Uh, if I enter a little more shallowly, it creates an Ikkyo Ura situation. If my entry is even more shallow, then it's a Korigai situation. Just needs to be effective. 
So look at that spatial relationship. So, um, I like the Kemi. I like the Kemi a lot. And I think that um, there's a lot to be learned about the Nage Waza side of things to the Kemi Waza side of things. It's sort of like your hand. You can't separate really the one side from the other. You need them both to make a hand. So we have Nage and Uke. And together, we learn about these techniques. We do Kadegego, so we're studying a predetermined series of movements and learning about the essence of these techniques and the situations where they would be appropriate. And we also have to think about them from an uke perspective. We can't just think of, how am I supposed to move as nage in the meeting nage? We also have to think, how am I supposed to move as uke in order to create an attack situation that results in Yurimi Nage being the appropriate response. So, Uke's engagement, involvement, and presence is very, very important to training. So, if I'm going to... If I just stand here, she can't do anything with me. Because obviously I'm not attacking her, right? It's kind of like, oh yeah, that, duh. But, if she just, if I do this, there's nothing here either. He came to Sensei, he always talks about, talks about uh, okay, being honest. It means don't tank. Don't just fall down. Also, to me, that means Uke has to be present and involved in trying to attack. Doesn't mean I gotta go all ballistic on her, but I have to be doing something and not just. It has, we talked about Aikido, using the attacker's energy against them. So, we're going to look at that a little bit. But now there's some energy. I'm entering, I'm giving her some feeling, something to work with. If she's going to Tenkan, she could feel my line of energy and move with it. Rather than taking the energy, trying to go in a different direction, colliding with it. So, we're going to work for a minute about who gets actually being present and applying some pressure and not being feeling that and moving with it. And it doesn't have to be fast. You can engage really once you grab and the attack happens. This is too slow. This is too late. There's a variety of people we're talking about, including Kate since yesterday. We're for a minute to give each other that and feel the invasion so that you can then feel what line you want to move up. And we need to be safe by the connected piece. What? There's nothing to do. There's nothing to do. Why? Unless I want to make it up. Unless you want to make it up. Which is a possibility also. But that's not what we're training in now. I didn't give you anything, right? It's my defense. 
if she does something with her other hand or with her foot, you know, I get to defend myself with this. I also get to continue my attack. So please don't be complacent and just do that arm daily. You shouldn't be okay with somebody manhandling you. You should not, it should not be okay to have somebody get in your face like this. Unless someone says, excuse me, allow me to, for training purposes. So, from here, Uke is going to continue making a kokyu ho situation by putting some pressure. She's simply going to raise her head about a hand above her head. And then down, for seven. Here, I'm going to continue coming in and up. She raises up, and then down. Thank you. 
wait for, wait for that feeling to blossom, or I don't know. <laughs> You try even things that you're not sure if they're going to work or not. Try all kinds of things and see what feels good, okay. what feels effective. Go like this. Secure. 
I'm not protecting myself at all. There's no way I can attack him because he's got a more direct line to my center line. If you had a sword, if you're going to do a straight cut, a showman type cut, you bring the sword up your center line and you bring it down your center line. You don't do this. There's a, of course, there's a cut from Hasso, from Waki, from different stances here that we can do, but in this situation, if I approach him from here to strike, I'm dead before anything even happens. So you have to think about how you're going to approach and where your strike is initiating from, originating from. This, the couple of techniques that we've done, how, how do we choose which one we're going to do? The grab, I'm attacking, and then I'm striking, he's protecting, slash, he's striking. If he, if I'm stronger, we can say, more on top of it than he is, I get the upper hand, and he can do the tenkan into the kokunage thing. If he's in a good place and the man just take my body over, then we have the ikkyo thing. So, two different situations depending on how we end up in relationship to each other. So, let's look at both of those. I still as okay, have to give some input and intent. So, which one is it? Not any set of situation then, for who is going to be in charge. Depending on who takes the initiative. He's not getting 
He wants to pay patents off. I want to protect myself. He wants to keep his structural integrity and disrupt mine. I want to keep my structural integrity and disrupt his. So we're trying to do the same things, um, but we each have a part to play in this relationship for the purpose of developing an understanding of this art that we're training in. But if you do this time loop, if you get in this situation and it's neutral, what do we do? There's ways to elicit um, energy movement to elicit the movement of the body. I can apply some pressure, he can apply some pressure. I can recede, he could recede. All these different things, but it's the same for both of us. So in reality, there, there isn't really an okay and a not There only is because we agree there is. So let's do something, take a couple minutes to do something that I find kind of fun but difficult. And we're not going to have an okay and not We engage, and if there is an opening to take something and turn it into something, we'll do it. And if you can turn it over on the other person, we'll do it. So start in a neutral position and then start a movement from that and see what happens. <laughs> Keep that connection and do some zapping with your ball. <laughs> 